Hello, everybody. My name is Ever Barbero, and today I'd like to talk about example 2.5 in my textbook, Finite Element Analysis of Composite Materials Using Abacus. In example 2.5, we will show you how to use symmetry boundary conditions to reduce the size of the model, yet get the accurate results as if you solve the entire part, the structure, or component. As usual, we start by saving the empty model. Now, we define one quarter of the geometry. We use module part, create, 2D, deformable, shell. Then, we define points, and join them with a rectangle. You can explore other options, which could be simpler, faster. Once you have the rectangle, add a circle to represent the notch, then, trim the unnecessary lines. When you hit done, you get the part. Next, we provide material properties, as usual. Next, we define section properties, namely, the thickness and the type of section, solid, plain stress. The section is a solid. Select plain stress slash strain, and enter a thickness because we want plain stress. Abacus will know that we want plain stress, not plain strain, when we specify the element type, in module mesh. Finally, we assign the section to the part, which is easy because we have only one section, named section 1, that we can assign to our part. Next, we assemble the parts into a model. We choose instance type, independent, but we could have chosen dependent as well, it makes no difference because we only have one part. Next, we define step 1, after step initial, so that we can use step initial for the boundary conditions, and step 1 for the loads. Module load, includes boundary conditions, and load. We start with the boundary conditions, on the initial step. We specify symmetry with respect to the XZ plane. After selecting the bottom edge, Select Y symmetry, because Y is normal to the plane XZ, which is the plane of symmetry. Do the same for X symmetry. That way, we simulate a full model with one quarter of the geometry.
Next, we specify the loads on step 1. We apply the load as a pressure, to avoid a stress concentration at the edge where we apply the load. Select the edge where the pressure is to be applied. The magnitude is minus 10, because positive pressure points towards the model, like compression, but in this example, we want a traction load. Next, we mesh the model. If you assembled the part as independent, here you mesh the instance. Meshing includes seating to control the mesh density, mesh controls, element type, and finally meshing itself. Double check that element type, family, is plain stress. Next, we define a job. Submit. And wait for it to run. Abacus runs the job in two phases. First, the analysis of input file processor, checks the input file for obvious errors, which is not very useful because the INP file is written by CAE, which seldom makes mistakes. Then, Abacus runs the job itself, and writes results to the output database, ODB. Once the job is completed, you can click, Results. That will take you to module visualization, and open the ODB for you. There are many options in module visualization. Here we illustrate how to extract results to a file, called Abacus RPT, where RPT means report. Stress values are more accurate at the integration points, also called gauze points, but nodes are easier to locate on the model, so Abacus extrapolates stress values to the nodes by combining stress information from all elements adjacent to a node. But where are those nodes? To find out, we toggle show node labels, using module mesh, view, assembly display options, show node labels.
Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.